Hey there, race fans. It's race day. Top five with me, Frank Five. Darlington Raceway, one of the most historic racetracks that we go to in all of NASCAR. It's one of the most prestigious tracks. It's one of the tracks where our sport got started, even though Daytona is one of the places where we got started. Darlington has been a trademark of history with all the incredible racing and chaos and basically just memories that we still hold cherished to this day. Hella today at the track, too tough to tame, the lady in black on a special day where we celebrate all of our mothers. And one of our former Southern 500 winners literally kicked the field in the rear end today. And I haven't seen a dominant performance like this since Jeff Gordon. Let's talk about our Mother's Day event at Darlington. Number one, Martin Truex Jr. driving the throwback scheme to his championship year when Furniture Row Racing was still intact. Um, he won the championship that season, winning most races out of any driver in the famous black uh, car. Auto Owners Insurance paid tribute to that scheme today. Truex dominated today's race, capturing Stage 1, Stage 2, and of course, the entire race in general, winning today's Goodyear 400 at Darlington Raceway over Kyle Larson, Kyle Busch, William Byron, and Denny Hamlin. Martin Truex Jr. was just dominant from the get-go. Started in the top five and just quickly worked his way to the front. He definitely had the best car on the short runs and the long runs. I mean, he literally opened up the a gap on the field by I think 13 seconds at one point that's not as dominant as Ned Jarrett's 14 lap win ahead of everybody else back in the day but still a very dominant performance in the last Truex led 248 of the 293 scheduled laps today I mean just an absolute clinic that he and his old team put on today him and his new Sort of new as crew chief because he came in last year after Cole Pern suddenly retired. James Small have definitely been hitting it off this year. They've got three wins. They're the only driver to and team to have more than just one win this season. Everybody else in the field's got one win. Martin Schwartz Jr. has not one win, not two wins, but three wins. I mean, this guy is basically bringing back his... 2019 championship form, championship contender form, 2018 form, 2017 form, even 2016 was a dominant year for Truex. He definitely is picking up from where he left off in 2019 because last year it was a little bit of a challenging year with a new crew chief and James Small. They ran the top five a lot. They only had one win at that night race in Martinsville. They've kind of, you know, just been back and forth for the most part at you know times but this year they've definitely been consistently strong each and every week i mean arguably you can make an argument denny hamlin's the best joe gibbs driver right now consistent from a consistent standpoint but i think martin trace jr is starting to turn into that guy i mean he put on a clinic today great pit stops great car i mean no issues whatsoever had a little challenge late with kyle larson catching him but unfortunately couldn't really get him because Truex was able to negotiate lap traffic, even though one of them was Ryan Newman. And I knew if Truex got to Newman because he's the toughest guy to pass on the track, Truex is going to have a hard time. But he went by him like snap of fingers. So great job by the whole 19 team, Martin Truex, this team. Definitely think that this team could be in the championship for when we go to Phoenix later this year, which they won at earlier this year. So things are going the way, especially on the short tracks with the uh, short... Um, sort of spoiler and the high horsepower um they're def it's definitely going in their way number two kyle larson had to overcome a lot today to get himself up in position to battle marcho Jr. for the win at the beginning of the second stage after the end of stage one where everybody's having their pit stops before we went green and started stage two kyle larson was caught for speeding on pit road and had to reach out the tail end of the longest line but he fought his way all the way up into the top 10 pretty much stayed there the majority of the day and then we got to the final stage he turned it up, and he was really fast on the long runs today. It seems like long runs, other than just Martin Truex Jr., were really good to Kyle Larson. And he got into Truex, like, up there late in the going after the final green flight pit stop cycle. He got up to at least two tenths, and I felt like if Truex hits lap traffic at the wrong place at the wrong time, Kyle Larson's going to steal it from him. Unfortunately, it did not come to fruition, so Larson had to settle for a uh, second place finish for today but still a really good performance for the team um based off of what happened in last week where he led the most laps and was arguably the best car in kansas but he didn't win because late race restart he and blaney made contact and of course we remember two weeks ago talladega he finished dead last because the motor for some reason uh <laughs> didn't last that long which was pretty disappointing pretty shocking and of course they had a subpar performance at richmond so first top 10 or slash top five since the Martinsville race, so momentum's back on the side for Colorado. They've got fast race cars. They're going to win more races. This team's going to be fine. 
Number three, Kyle Busch off the win last week at Kansas Speedway came in today and he was just one lap away from leading his 18,000th lap in NASCAR Cup Series competition. But Martin Trish Jr. early in the race caught him, passed him for the lead, and Kyle Busch went around because he had a right rear tire going down. And Kyle had to fight his way back. He was stuck in the middle of the pack in stage one. Then he got to the top 10 stage two and ran pretty much second, third in the final stage the rest of the race. He definitely had a good bounce back from that tire cut down earlier. Um, I definitely think that their 550 horsepower package at the moment, especially off of last week, is better than what they have on the 750 horsepower package. They've had some good runs and they had a great result today, but they need a little bit more of that, especially if he wants to be in that championship for Phoenix later this year, because that's a track high horsepower, low downforce, and if Kyle Busch is not, you know, is there, possibly, but he doesn't put it all together and is battling it out for the championship, then um, that's that's a that's a big mistake and something they're going to have to work on. So, otherwise, great bounce back for Kyle Busch and his team today. Number four, William Byron puts together a top five finish today, but he set a record today. That's his 10th straight race finishing in the top 10. Ever since his Homestead win, William Byron has not finished outside the top 10. This kid is having, uh, shall I say, he's having the year he'd been hoping for, the, the, the breakthrough year. The breakthrough year. This is William Byron's breakthrough year. Yes, he got his first career win in cup competition last year at the night race at Daytona. But it is Daytona, obviously. And he had some relatively good races last year, but he didn't make it out of the round of 16 because of the crash at Bristol. But this year, the first two races, he was in the big one of the Daytona 500, was able to finish. He had some kind of work problem at the end of the road course race at Daytona and finished 33rd. And then we go to Homestead, and he wins the thing. And he has not finished outside the top 10 since then. William Byron has definitely gotten together. He's definitely starting to become a consistent top 10 driver. And I think one of the reasons why is not only fast race cars and how good Hendrick's been this year, but it's because of his new crew chief and Rudy Fiegel, who he's worked with in the trucks before. They worked together at KBM in 2016, won the most races, but they did make the championship four because he blew up in that next to last race to make it to the championship four at Phoenix. But this guy, Rudy Fiegel coming in, working with William Byron, picking up where they left off from 2016. They have been hitting it out of the park. And Rudy Fiegel up until this year had never been a crew chief for a cup team before. So this has been impressive by the whole organization. They've done a phenomenal job. They definitely, I think at the moment, they're probably the second probably the second best car because Kyle Larson's been the best car for Hendrick this year. The other two, obviously I'll talk about my a little bit later. Alex Bowman already has a win. He's been up and down, but he's still, he's still not running bad. I think he's been running better lately than what he did earlier this year. But the Hendrick squad definitely has, have, has been having a really good year overall, and it's good to see William Byron, who's been kind of one of the weak links on Hendrick Motorsports the last couple of years, finally getting it together, and who knows? William Byron could be in the championship four, but we've still got a lot of races left. And number five, it was throwback weekend in Darlington. I know a lot of people, you know, when the news broke out that before the season started, that throwback weekend would be for this race at Darlington uh, because we enjoy Darlington. It's now the first race in the playoffs, but I think a lot of the NASCAR teams and even NASCAR themselves wanted the cup drivers that were part of the playoffs one of them, instead of focusing on the throwback schemes, to focus on battling for the championship. Um, it could change for 2022 next year, or this could still be our throwback weekend um, for next year, because it most looks, it looks most likely that Darlington will have another race in the spring in the 2022 schedule, which obviously has not been released yet and probably won't until the end of this year. But it's nice to see a lot of throwback schemes today. I mean, we saw Kevin Harvick threw it back to his first cup race that he made in 2001, one week after Dale Earnhardt's sad passing in the Daytona 500. We saw Corey LaJoy, who I think arguably had the best paint scheme in the garage, throwing it back to the late Alan Kowicki with the Xerox paint scheme, which he actually had Xerox on his car today. And uh, he got a top 25 out of it. Um, there's been a lot of other good schemes. Uh, Joey Logano went all red for Mario Andretti and his uh, red Formula One win, first win car, and he won in, um, I think, South Africa in the 70s or the 60s, around that time when Mario was getting into racing and being really good at it. There were a lot of good throwback paint schemes. Um, there were a couple of teams that didn't do throwback schemes, including Brad Keselowski, Kurt Busch, and Christopher Bell. Uh, what other what other paint schemes could I think of that were uh, really good? 
And there's a couple of Oh, uh, Michael McDowell ran a throwback to Bill Elliott when he won the Winston Million Dollar when he was million dollar bill when the Winston Million at uh, Darlington in the eighties. That was a really good paint scheme. Uh, didn't see a lot of that on television because he struggled. Uh, there was there was a, there was a couple of good throwback schemes. Um, there was, there was a good amount of throwback schemes in the race. Oh, William Byron honored Neil Bonnet with the Valvoline scheme and changed the font. It looked like what Bonnet had in the Grove number 75 in the 80s. It was a great paint scheme. Uh, there, was, there, were, there, were, there were some good paint schemes this year. There were not so good paint schemes, but I'm not going to get into full in the paint scheme because this isn't a paint scheme video. I'm just talking about them. Uh, Chase Elliott did a throwback to uh, Alan Coyke as well with his 1992 Hooters car where that year he won the championship battling with Chase's father, Bill Elliott, and, of course, Davey Allison and that incredible championship battle we had in Atlanta in 1992. Uh, Anthony Alfredo also did a throwback to Alan Coyke's first cup start, uh, which what the same scheme, I think, Maybe the same number uh, that Kel Yarbrough drove, number 28, the Hardy scheme. Uh, there was, a, I think, a Bobby Hill and paint scheme that Justin Haley did. Uh, and Eric Amarola did a nice uh, Mark Martin throwback paint scheme. Unfortunately, that car crashed early. And sums up how bad Amarola has been this year. It's been bad luck all around. Um, I wouldn't necessarily say it was the best year for throwbacks, but there were some good paint schemes this year. We've had better. And hopefully next year... When we have this again, there will be even better paint schemes. And more drivers will contribute, as I mentioned. Some guys didn't participate this year because they didn't really probably, you know, think about, um, are we going to do it? Do we have the scheme? Do we have an idea? Do we not? Um, but it was good to have throwback weekend at Darlington um, in the spring. It was good to see the fans were in attendance there. Our Fox crew participated with the throwback tradition with incredible 70s style looking uniforms and by the way at the track this weekend jamie little and regan smith working the pits they didn't wear their masks so that felt really good to see the reporters talk and see their smiling faces instead of seeing a mask covering their face so that that felt really good and they did a good job with their uh throw uh throwback uniforms thrown into the 70s 80s early 90s early 2000s and even they have the uh, the microphone cover that you saw they're showing the logo of the uh network that you brought that you uh broadcast races for and call races for they went back to the early fox sports logo that they had when nascar uh and fox made their first deal to be partners as fox broadcasting nascar in 2001 so that was pretty cool so it was a good throwback weekend in darlington overall relatively good race finally driver recap chase elliott seventh place finish really good result um not as good as we were in both races all three races last year i mean we finished fourth in that race last year in the spring and nascar's return from during the pandemic then the wednesday night race we should have won that race but we got dumped by kyle bush and chase elliott obviously gave him the middle finger i won't show that because that's not uh, appropriate to young viewers and in the 500 he found martin trix jr and with 20 to go trix slides in front of elliott and takes them both into the wall and out of contention to win the race uh today elliott had to start the rear for unapproved adjustments um but he fought his way up into the top 10 kind of stayed there for most of the race we weren't necessarily a top five car uh, but seventh place still a good result and the nice um, Hooters scheme, you know, honoring Alan Kowicki. But it was a good result overall. But next couple races are going to be even better for Elliott because he's going to try to see Loves Dover, a new road course, Coda, and of course the Coke 600 to make up for the one that got away last year. So it was a good result overall for Elliott today considering all that went down. One thing I also want to quickly mention is the next gen card that will be run next year in 2022 for the Chevy, the Ford, and Toyota was released on Wednesday. And I got to say, they look pretty damn good. They are going to help save the amount of money that goes into these cars. They're going to be a big, you know, help save money for all these teams and hopefully bring new teams to the sport. Um, it'll enhance the competition most likely. Um, obviously, one lug not like one lug stud to put on the wheels, which, you know, it's going to take time to get used to, but that, mean, that means really fast pit stops. It's going to be lickety split. That's going to be very interesting. Uh, but I like I like them all. I like the Camaro. And they also all look like, you know, like full body stock cars. I mean, the Gen 6 car we have now is full body stock car to look exactly like the cars you see on the road. But these even look better. Uh, and then, of course, there's those little hood things on, like, in the hood, like, where the air flows in and everything. That could also enhance the competition, bring cars close together. And there's also a big diffuser in the back. So... All I know is I cannot wait to see what this next-gen car does next year, and hopefully it can help NASCAR in competition and help the TV rank. So time will tell. 
So that is it for Darlington Throwback Weekend. Up next is the Monster Mile at Dover. Martin Church Jr. has been very dominant there in the past. So has Kevin Harvick. Chase Elliott's been really good there. Who will come out on top and who could be the next Jimmy Johnson? Because it's going to be where we're going to Dover and Jimmy Johnson's not in it to try to crush the field. Oh, but he hasn't done that since his last win there in 2017. So we will see who will crush the Monster Mile or we will see who miles the monster will get it and bite in the rear end. We will see you next weekend. So subscribe, like, congrats to Mara Trish Jr. Happy Mother's Day to all the mothers out there and to my mom. I love you so much. Have a great week, everybody.